1984, the Texas Longhorns entered the Red River rivalry against the Oklahoma Sooners as the top-ranked team in the country, while their rival ranked third. I just want to be a winner this year so I can enjoy talking about it for a whole year because it lasts all the way up until the next game. <laughs> It's the kind of game that you dream of being in. Uh, ever since I've been young, you know, I've always wanted to come to the University of Texas, and uh, Oklahoma's just been one of the teams I always wanted to play against. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's deep in the tradition of football, you know, for Oklahoma is concerned. I think uh, Saturday, this game's going to be watched by a lot of people, so we're going to be looking forward to playing in. UT was the defending Southwestern Conference champions, averaging 33.7 points per game on the year. Senior QB Todd Dodge led the way for the Horns, with many veteran leaders on the team. Well, uh, I guess it's the biggest game so far because uh, we're 3-0 and they're 4-0, and uh, someone's going to lose or they're going to be a tie, but uh, I would prefer someone to lose and not us. <laughs> These two teams haven't met undefeated since 1979. But if you keep count which team has knocked the other team off from the undefeated ranks, Texas leads 19 to 11. Meanwhile, OU entered the year coming off three consecutive four loss seasons. First ever under head coach and future Dallas Cowboys coach Barry Switzer. The Sooners entered this matchup with the nation's second rate defense, allowing just 9.5 points per game. The offense was led by senior QB Danny Bradley, with freshman and future Dallas Cowboys Hall of Famer Troy Aikman getting some snaps throughout the season for his future NFL coach. I want to beat them so bad that I would probably give up anything to beat them. It's hard to concentrate on things all week before and even weeks before because you're playing teams that you know aren't as good as Texas and you're thinking about the Texas game. It's just. You can't, you can't stop thinking about playing them, and you just want to win so bad, it's just, you know, you can't control it. With 75,587 fans in the stands, the players rushed onto a wet Cotton Bowl field. In the first quarter, an early OU mistake allowed Dodge to find wide receiver Bill Boy Bryant for the 25-yard touchdown. Well, of course, you know, it was wet, but both sides had to play with it wet, and, uh, you know, we've been throwing the ball a lot more this year. Later in the second quarter, a bad pitch to the running back. gave the ball to the Longhorns near the Sooners' end zone. Four plays later, Texas was on the board again. The Horns went into the locker room with that 10-0 halftime lead, with rain continuing to come down on the field and the fans. Both lines, they couldn't get very good footing at all blocking, and I think that, uh, that caused some problems. We really thought, you know, just coming out the second half, we knew we were behind and we knew that we should have been ahead just because of a lot of mistakes. So we came out the second half, we just knew that we were going to win the game. Oklahoma first-year offensive coordinator and future UT head coach Mac Brown made some adjustments going into the third, getting more physical with the running game. After a fumble recovery near scoring territory, that running game got the Sooners on the board. Something that they started doing was running the ball, FG you could call it, they would run the ball inside the tackles and uh, you know they had some success with it. Now with some momentum, the OU defense kept the horns backed up into the team's own end zone, leading to this costly safety. I don't think anybody had dry feet. Um, you know, it was awful conditions, it really was. I think it's to our advantage we practiced this week in, in those kind of conditions. With the score now 10-9, OU would get the ball back on offense. Bradley took the Sooners right down the field, while senior running back Steve Sewell finished off the drive on the left side. <laughs> Sewell
Switzer had his first lead of the game and decided to go for two, but failed keeping the score 15 to 10. They benefited from the rain because uh, in the third and, third and fourth quarter, they start running running the ball between the tackles. And uh, we couldn't really do, it, do anything about that until you know it was almost too late. Into the fourth quarter, the OU defense continued to show why it was one of the best in the nation that year. But UT got some momentum back, thanks to this double screen tight end delay. And freshman running back Kevin Nelson scampering 58 yards down the field. <laughs> UT now only needed two yards to take back the lead after three tries from running back Terry Orr. <laughs> Nelson gave it a final fourth try. <laughs> but couldn't convert. Oklahoma ball backed up into their own end zone. Well, Calvin Nelson is a fine young football player. He grew up a great deal today. Thank goodness he did. Also unable to move the ball, Switzer decided to make his gutsiest call of the game. His snapper purposefully threw the ball over the punter's head, giving the ball to UT and bringing the OU defense back onto the field with now a 15-12 lead. We told them that we're going to get it back and get another chance. If our defense can hold them, which we did, and we hope we can get a touchdown out of it. The Horns took over at their own 44-yard line with only 2.04 to play, and they would need some help from the referees. A defensive pass interference on second and 10 kept the Horns' early drive alive. Dodge took UT down to the Oklahoma 15-yard line with 10 seconds left and a chance to take back the lead. We moved the ball with two minutes and 11 seconds, and I think that showed a little character about us and, and moving it down there like we did. But then, what initially looked like an interception wasn't, as an official said, the defender stepped out of bounds. So now the Horns had one final chance off the foot of kicker Jeff Ward. Right through the uprights, and the 15-15 tie had been salvaged. We didn't win the game, but you know we didn't lose it. Uh, on my part, I feel like a loss because I felt like we was a better football team. If we hadn't went for the tie, you know, maybe we could, we, maybe we would have dropped the ball in the end zone. We'd have lost. So I think a tie is always better than a loss. I'm standing on the 50-yard line and looking right at the tight end, and he gets hit in the rip, and the ball comes right out. Migliazzo falls on it, and they run over and see if his knees down. Now I'm telling you, if they ain't homing it. We played hard, and they played hard, and it was a good game. And, you know, it's, it's a disappointment to me that we tied, but it's a heck of a lot better than losing. No one's beating us, and when you're number one and nobody beats you, you stay number one. This 1984 matchup ended as one of only five ties in series history, with the most recent one happening in 1995. This game might not have been the ending either team wanted, but it certainly will go down as one of the most interesting games in the Red River rivalry.